Hello, this is Katie Nicole, and I have not made a video in probably like over four months. Um, I think the last video I made was in August in um, 2019, and it's January 2020 now. Um, I had my RNY gastric bypass surgery, um, and that was August 28th, 2019. So it's been a little over four months since my surgery. Um, my high weight was 232 pounds. My surgery weight was 237 pounds. And now I am actually down to 176 pounds right now. And I'm five foot four and I'm 34 years old. Um, I just, I've been meaning to get a video. I don't know why I didn't do a video for four months. I think it was just, you know, there was just so many things going on. I, um, you know, right, I had my surgery. I took four weeks off. I'm a high school teacher and um, just was resting and recuperating most of those weeks and then was just thrown right back into school and it was like, the fourth or fifth week of school, because I had missed the first four weeks of school, so it was like the fifth week of, well, four and a half week of school or whatever. And um, I teach in a pretty, like an urban high school, so it's it's tough. Um, so it's just been, you know, teaching every almost every single night. I'm driving my kids to swimming or cheer or whatever. Um, so there's always things going on. But um, I did want to give just a little update. My surgery went really, really well. Um, it was at 10.30 in the morning, and it was a Wednesday. Um, my husband took me to the hospital. Our That hospital had is brand new. Um, it, it was like going into a hotel when you walked in. It was like a big open um, lobby with like, a you know, open railings and glass and everything. It was really beautiful. They, you, they you sign in. They take your... Um, like all your insurance and all that stuff, they sign you in, they take your cell phone number, and that's how they register you now. They, they'll they text you, and I think they gave my husband like one of those little like restaurant pagers for him that he could um, get up, to, like they would buzz him when I came out, buzz him for whatever, but I think they took my cell phone number, and that's what they do at that hospital a lot for all, a lot of my different appointments that I've been to. They take your cell phone number, they text you like, hey, go here, or hey, we're ready for you, or whatever. Um, went back into one of the pre-surgery area, like a little room, um, you know, got into a, a hospital gown, some socks, took everything off. Um, my husband was in there with me. They gave me, you know, like your bracelet that you have to wear. Um, I got in the bed. They gave me some nice warm, cozy blankets, gave me like a whole cocktail of things. I think they gave me like gabapentin, um, Tylenol some Xanax, they gave me a whole bunch of different things because they want to, the Xanax was for anxiety to calm me down because I do, I get a really high blood pressure and high heart rate when I'm about to go to surgery. Even when I had my gallbladder removed um, last December, I um, had a Xanax before. It's, it's, it's just almost something that they, at that hospital, they always just give you. Um, they ask you if you are anxious and if you would like something to relax and I always say yes. So, and, they, and the gabapentin, that helps with like nerves, like nerve pain. Tylenol, they, they just give you like, I think they gave me like Celebrex, they give you all different kinds of pain medicine so that they're fighting the pain from all the different ways that it can be fought. Um, I did have the, they give you two injections after you're already asleep, they give you two injections in your, um, near your hip bones and that's like a block and that just like blocks all the pain and that lag can last for like up to 48 hours. So that really, really helped. Um, and I had had that before with my gallbladder the year before so a lot of this was like really similar procedures. Um, they wheeled me back and I actually, I had, it was my same surgeon who did my gallbladder removal and the same anesthesiologist. And I love both of them. They're just awesome. The um, Anton, the anesthesiologist, he's from some Eastern Bloc European country. He's hilarious. Like when I had my gallbladder out, he was he's like, I'm gonna make you feel so good. You're gonna think my name's Crystal. And so like, I brought that up this time. I'm like, last time you tried to tell me your name was Crystal. And like, they remembered, it was just, I don't know. It may, it would just set me at ease that I had, that I knew both of them 
and part of the reason I chose my surgeon for um, weight loss surgery was that I, I already knew him. You know, I had had him for my gallbladder too. So that made me feel more comfortable. Um, wheeled me back. Pretty much that's, you remember getting into the surgery room. They have you slide over onto the surgical table and then pretty much you're out because they've already put the IV in you when they do, like I think they put the IV in you before you even get rolled back. I can't even remember. Um, and the, the OR is a little bit cold, um, whatever your sleep, so you don't really know. Woke up in my um, hotel room, in my um, hospital room, and I think my husband was there. I don't think my mom had shown up yet. I think it was just my husband was like sitting there chilling, waiting, and I was just like so out of it. I remember it, it, that part was a little bit different coming out of it because when I came out of my um, gallbladder surgery, I remember waking right up with the nurses and like talking to them because they were talking about some restaurant. They were talking about a, a vineyard that's nearby or wine place, whatever. And I was like, oh yeah, I know that place. And I was like butting into their conversation. This time I was all, I was back in my hospital room. I was totally out of it. Did not want to talk. Didn't, you know, it was just, I think it's a lot more invasive surgery. So I don't know if they use more drugs or put you under more or whatever, but it was, I felt a lot groggier waking up this time. And then um, I did, I felt totally fine, um, you know, besides the pain. I, the first day I was up and walking around and like walking the whole entire floor just about. And it was a pretty big floor to do laps around. Um, every, you know, couple hours I would get up and do that. I could get up and go to the bathroom by myself. I, um, I, they had those things on your legs that squeeze them so you don't get blood clots. They had those. I was able to get those on and off by myself. Some of the time I did have the nurse help me because it was kind of hard to like bend all the way down with the incisions in your stomach. Um, I had, they had put a binder on me, which I highly recommend. If you're getting the surgery, you need to, if they don't put one on you, you need to ask for it because that's a lifesaver. Um, what else? They just, they gave me the little tiny medicine cups of water and broth to just keep sipping it. Well, the first day you're not supposed to have any liquids. My doctor actually for the, there was me and another guy having a surgery that day. He had us, we were allowed to suck on ice cubes that evening. Usually you're not allowed to have anything by mouth um, that whole and first day until you wake up the next day after surgery. But he had allowed us to have ice because he thought that that would help with inflammation, like cooling it down. And I mean, having water is never a bad thing. So we did that. Um, the next morning when I woke up, um, probably like eight or nine, they took me down to radiology to do my swallow test. And you, and the stuff wasn't, everybody always talks about how horrible this stuff was. I don't know if my hospital uses a different kind of stuff, but it was, I think it was kind of orangey flavored and it wasn't real bad, but I was trying to drink this and they're like, you have to drink more, you have to drink more. I'm like, dude, I just got my stomach operated on and it's this big. Like, are you crazy? Are you trying to hurt me? But I did, I just kept sipping the stuff. Um, I think they might've had to do the x-ray like two times because the first time it hadn't gone, like it, they didn't allow enough time for it to get down there or whatever, I don't know. So they did it once and then they wheeled me back and did it again. And then I had, the worst part was sitting there waiting for someone to come push me back up to my hotel, my hotel room, back up to my hospital room. Like they have this like line of people with little curtains in between, like some of them are in beds and some of them are in wheelchairs. I was in a wheelchair and I mean, it would have been better if I was in a bed cause then I wouldn't, I would have been able to go to sleep. But I'm like sitting there in this wheelchair looking around I don't even think I had my phone with me, so I couldn't even, like, it wasn't like I could, like, play a game or read or anything. And I was just sitting there for, like, 20, 30 minutes waiting for the hospital transportation person to come push me back up to my room. So that was the worst part of it. Um, uh, what else? So that was the second day. The third day, I think, is when you're supposed to go home. Um, I, this is really disgusting, so if you really don't want to hear about potty stuff, don't watch this. You can turn it off now. Um, that Friday was the third day I was there, and I was having diarrhea, and I think it was from the berry, the swallow test. I don't know if it's barium. Is that what the stuff they use? I don't know. But anyway, um, it destroyed my digestive system. Like, I could not, I, and I've never, I don't have diarrhea hardly ever, um, and I don't have bathroom problems hardly ever. I could not hold my poop in. I pooped the bed, 
had to have a, I don't think anybody, my mom and my husband weren't there with me then. Um, they came in and I had to have the person, the assistant, whatever, whoever she was come in and help clean me up. Like I cleaned up myself, myself up, but she, um, I think she got me a new hospital gown. She, um, and I think I was wearing my own underwear at that point. Um, she changed the bed and put one of those like puppy pad things down um, and left a whole bunch of stack of those so that I could change those. Um, and it was like really, really dark. It was like black. So it was like kind of freaking me out. Um, and I had like a whole bunch of diarrhea in the toilet too. I pooped the bed like two or three times. Like I would wake up, I think I would like fart in my sleep and then wake up and there was like poop. And so that was not a good feeling. So it was freaking me out. And I told the doctor about it when he came to see me. And so he said, they ended up doing a blood transfusion on me. I don't know if some of my numbers were down or what, I can't remember what all happened, but they did two units of blood transfused on me Friday and then decided to keep me, I don't know, maybe it was either Thursday or Friday. I don't know, but anyway, I ended up staying a fourth day. I stayed on Saturday and then went home on Saturday um, afternoon. I did have, my mom came and visited me. She brought Chloe, my oldest daughter. Um, then, I don't know if she brought my youngest, younger daughter or not. Um, my husband was there quite a bit. Um, I had two of my friends, coworkers that I'm close with. They came and visited me. That was really awesome. That made me feel really good. Um, I went home, pretty much spent the next week in bed. Um, I took the painkillers they gave me. Let's see, I still have some. I have, I have props. Um, this is what I was sent home from the hospital with was some oxycodone acetamin acetaminophen. So that was that. And it was... 28 of them and then they sent me home with 20 permethazine tablets that I think is for like more like nausea which I, those I'm really glad I took those more I think than the pain pills I still have a bunch of those left anyway um I took the pain pills for a week um I don't think I took the maximum amount of like what I needed I probably took two a day two a day maybe like one in the morning and one in the evening so I could sleep um, and that only went on for a week because I knew that that would cause me to be like, constipated because that's what happens when you take those. So I didn't want to like take those the whole time. Um, and when I was at home, I really just, I had broth, I had water, I tried to do protein shakes, didn't really work, you know, they made me, my stomach upset. Um, once I was cleared to do... I think once I got home, I could do full liquids. So I could do like some soups, um, like the pureed soups. I can't really remember what else I did. I think I might have been able to have yogurt. So I did like some protein yogurt um, every day. My husband would like divide them into little teeny cups with lids that I showed in my last video. Um, and I'd have that. Really, I just, everything was pretty normal. Um, my bigger incision that's over here, that one they did not um, put steri strips over on the on the outside. They um, that one they leave open to like heal from the inside out. I don't know why they do that. It's the biggest incision that they work out of. Um, that one had a little bit of oozing, but that was normal normal healing. None of it was like it wasn't gross. It didn't smell bad or anything like that. Um, I just that was mainly the only um, one that I had to change. I had some bandages that I used on that. Um, they gave me a clean new um, binder, you know, abdominal binder to take home. So I used that. I wore that for probably two weeks at least, three weeks maybe even. Um, the Steri strips stayed on for like ever. It was like a month before I took the Steri, like I finally was like, I'm sick of this. I'm pulling these off. So I took those off. Um, yeah, I have a lot of little incisions all over my belly that I'm not that crazy about, but I don't, nobody sees my belly really anyway. Um, I just have to look at them when I get out of the shower. What else do I want to talk about? I think that's pretty much it. I just wanted to share what my surgery experience was. Um, and the video is getting kind of long. It's like 15 minutes. So I think I'm going to cut this off here and maybe pick up with another video in a little bit today. 
um, talking about some of the things that I do on a daily basis, like my vitamins, my water, protein shakes, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, see you later. Thanks for watching.